let's get harvesting some uh, fava bean. So this is something that you guys have been really interested in, so I thought I should share harvesting them. My first time harvesting fava bean, first time growing them. And uh, I'm pretty happy with them, really. There were times when I really wasn't crazy about them because uh, the, the seed is so big, and uh, I was worried if I was gonna get enough yield for it to be worth it because when the seeds are that big and you're getting one plant per seed, it doesn't take a lot of seed to make a five pound bag. That five pound bag being about $22, you know, you can kind of understand why you really want to make sure you're getting a good yield from that. Well, if you're actually going to weigh this stuff, you're going to find that um, you're going to get a ton of yield from that seed because these plants, and you can call these plants because they, they're huge. I mean, you can't call that a microgreen. It's a shoot. They're big. And I'm not sure that not every single one of these is ready to harvest right now, but I'm gonna harvest um, what I can. I'm gonna use one of these trays. I cut one just to see how this is gonna work because I'm using a knife, a razor knife, utility knife. Don't worry, I sterilized it. Um, and I'm gonna deliver them to my chef who gives me these, tra these trays for free and I'm gonna deliver these back to him in one of his trays. I think he's gonna be really happy with these, hopefully. I have no idea what he's gonna use these for. He doesn't either probably yet, because he's probably never had them. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I've got two trays like this. I'm gonna harvest up the ones that are ready. They're a little bit different lengths. They're not all the same height, um, but they were really coming into it. And I have tried one and they're pretty good. They taste sort of like a, uh, Sort of like a pea shoot, but not quite. It's kind of hard to explain. You're going to have to grow some if you really want to know what they taste like. Um, doing something a little bit different also today. I want to take the time and, and thank some of you guys that have been commenting. And some people comment, uh, contact me in different ways. Some people through my website. Some people find me on Facebook. On my, I got a Corey's Cave uh, page that I made. Kind of like share my YouTube stuff without it being on my personal page. And... People find me all over the place and so I have my laptop set up here and I thought while I was harvesting I would acknowledge some of you and, and thank you and share the comments that you have been making. Uh, I did go out finally and bought myself a nice new laptop. I think my last video or a couple videos ago told you I just couldn't bring myself to do it while well, I finally did. So let's get started here harvesting these. I'm just going to use my knife. The main reason I'm using the knife is that I, uh, when I saw this on YouTube, the, sh the guy that Curtis was interviewing su suggested that scissors, they'll tear these a little bit and that the, the stems will turn black and I don't want them to turn black. They were using a knife, a razor knife, and um, so that's what I'm doing. Pretty much harvesting these one at a time. There's some I won't harvest yet because I just don't feel like they're they're not quite ready. So I think there's going to be probably two harvests per this tray. Uh, somebody did just comment, um, Ari Waldman commented that he finds that uh, they get they get uh, better at, on round two and three. It must be that uh, they keep coming up. You know, that some of the seeds that didn't come up originally will come up later. And he feels that they uh, they produce well on their, their second and third round. That's good to know. So, thanks, Ari. So, like I said, these are all different lengths. Some of them are long. I'm just going to cut, cut them long and, and leave the stem on and let the chef decide what he wants to do. Maybe he'll like the stem. I really don't know. Actually had uh, Mary Jo Mady, hope I pronounce your name right, told me today that I was beautiful. Thought that was pretty cool. Not really used to getting told I'm beautiful, but I'll take it. It's a compliment.
So I'm definitely going to have to get better at this because this is kind of slow. But it's not something I'm familiar with. And it's kind of hard because I'm going in between them. So like I said, there's some that I'm not ready to harvest yet. So trying to pick the ones I want out of here is kind of difficult. But they add up quick. It doesn't take long to start getting some real substance out of this. Really opened up. They're really, really nice. What else I got? I got uh, Sam Rossi. He's a songwriter on YouTube. He's He's been commenting for a while. He really likes the speckled peas, just like I was uh, sharing with you guys. I was, I think I said, very, very, very happy with them. They're awesome. Uh, that's what I'm going to be buying from now on, unless I find something better. Speckled peas are a good way to go. It's kind of difficult deciding which ones I want to cut now and which ones I want to leave for later. Because they're, they're all just like a little bit different in their stage. I suppose that you maybe soaking these would help that. I don't know. I I don't really like soaking anymore. This one's kind of interesting. I saw this one when it was coming up too. Is it probably can't see this too on the camera, but it's got like a, a red stem, and you'll sometimes see that on sunflower, um, especially if you've been stressing them in any way with uh, maybe stacking them too long or or not too long, but longer. Or uh, from underwatering them, put getting too little water. And from what I've seen from some really good growers on YouTube, is that that red stem is actually kind of a desirable thing. They're more nutty when they get that. Well, food for thought. You scroll down a little bit here. Some more comments. Psycho Mofo has something to say. He is saying, he, he laughed when I said that my, uh, I thought $89 for lights, for LED lights was expensive. And uh, he's got some real expensive LEDs, um, $500 for a 900 watt LED and $250 for a 600 watt LED. Now the thing is, he's right. I mean, you can get some great lights but you don't grow microgreens with those kinds of lights. You could, but why would you? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I guess if you have them, maybe you're like doing a large area with just those lights, you could. But my cheap ass is going to stick to saying $89 expensive and $30 from Home Depot's cheap. One thing I wanted to point out as well is that uh, someone that found me on, had been who was watching my channel on YouTube, but also found me on Facebook, um, asked a question about watering microgreens, and so I shared my video on watering. And if you haven't seen that, you know, check it out. It's pretty basic, but just shows how I water my microgreens. But so I shared her that video, and when I did. I noticed something that that was a video I made in July of last year where I uh, I was talking about how I just hit a hundred subscribers and that was I was super excited about that to to have a hundred of you guys out there interested in watching me that's pretty cool well that was uh, about seven eight months ago and now I am nearing up on almost 3,000 subscribers, which you can imagine if I was super excited about a uh, hundred, my mind is blown that there's almost 3,000 of you out there that actually want to watch me do what I do. And it's awesome. That's, that's the main reason that I, I had this idea that I want to, you know, share some of your comments and, you know, talk about what you guys write to me because I, I you know, I want to acknowledge you guys, and I really appreciate you guys being out there 
if you're just watching this and you haven't subscribed and you think it's interesting watching what I'm doing, subscribe. Help get me to that 3,000 mark. Help get me up higher than that. Um, yeah, it's been fun for me. I just enjoy sharing the stuff I do. I'm going to do it anyways. Some people are interested in it. Why not share it with them? Made some really good uh, acquaintances. I, I call them friends, but it's people I've never met directly on uh, on YouTube from just having conversations with them and stuff. One of them I've mentioned before, and I, I've i actually linked to his page. It's Pepe, Pepe Faso. He's uh, he's my buddy from Down Under. Pepe, how you doing, buddy? Um, he's He's been a great guy. We've been talking for a while, back and forth. So this is kind of kind of cumbersome because I I keep I can't decide which ones to cut now, which ones not to cut now. I'm finding that I'm deciding to cut some other ones I originally wasn't going to cut, but I think they are ready. I probably could just cut all of them. I mean. Who cares if some are a little bit smaller? I mean, they're not all the same. So here's a comment I got earlier. And it was actually from uh, somebody who has used these microgreen seeds before, these fava bean seeds. Didn't have a good experience with them. And that was, um, his, his YouTube name is Up on the Roost, My Little Homestead. Up on the Roost, My Little Homestead. So... He used these, and he had problems with the seeds getting moldy. Um, and the, the fact that these seeds are, in his words, ginormous. Which, that word isn't really a good word, except for that there really isn't a word I could think of about being bigger. That's the only problem with using ginormous, is that there should be a word for something like what these seeds are, because they're bigger than ginormous. They're huge. Huge is the wrong word. Ginormous is better. But he also didn't really like them. I don't know if it was he didn't like the fava bean or if he just didn't like the seeds. But one thing he said, he mentioned, is that he had problems with um, the seeds getting moldy. And I didn't really notice that. And I'm looking around in here. I'm not really seeing any moldy seeds. That doesn't mean that they don't exist. Um, I covered them with soil. He said he did that as well. So, I don't know. I I did, I was planting some seeds uh, a little while ago. and I was, It was getting kind of late and I was kind of rushing. And so I planted some and I didn't cover them. And I left them stacked up until recently. And when I unstacked them, I did have a couple seeds that were moldy. And it wasn't the type of mold that I'm used to seeing. This was a... A, like a almost a uh, a greenish blackish this was mold this was not good I popped out the seeds that were moldy and then I covered the rest in soil and they're growing right here and they're looking pretty good and so I don't know I, I'm not like I said I don't see any any moldy seed in the one that I'm harvesting here but it's something I'll keep an eye on. Made a little bit of a mistake here. I didn't, I didn't weigh this tray before I started, so I, I'll have to separate it and weigh it or whatever if I want to know how much yield I actually got off this and weight. I'm probably gonna take this tray to the, the chef tomorrow and just tell him. I don't know, give me 20 bucks for it. That almost pays for my bag of seed. And we'll see if he really likes it or not. And then we'll go, go from there if he wants more. As I'm harvesting these, there's a scent, really familiar scent to me. And I can't really quite place it, though. It's almost like when you're, uh, you're mowing the lawn and you, uh, you hit some dandelions or something. Or some sort of weed. It's got kind of that sort of scent to it. A 
me get one of these literal ones here and I'll just munch that one down. Very good. It's actually a little bit more like pea, as in pea shoot, than I was thinking. The last time I tried it, I don't remember it being that strong of a pea shoot flavor, but it definitely is. It's very good. And like I said, a lot of substance to it. They're meaty, they're big. That's almost it for this, this tray. I got, got a pretty good size harvest here. Hopefully the chef likes them and wants to use them all because he's getting a lot. That'll help give me an idea of how I should maybe market them or if I should keep going with them or whatever. He'll let me know. He's a good guy. So that's what I've still got going. And I'm just going to let those grow. I'll water them more after, after the video. So that's what I got off that one tray. It's actually a pretty good, it's a pretty good size harvest right there. These are not 10, 20 trays either. Like I said, these are trays that my restaurant guy, my chef, gets his fish products in. Almost done with this tray. Getting there. It's my second tray. So a uh, guy by the name of World Home, he says, you're awesome, bro. Thanks, man. You're awesome, too. Somebody, Blake uh, Chastain, want to know if I really use nearly a pound of seed for my pea shoots. And the answer to that is, yeah, I do use nearly a pound. Um, I think, though, with the, the speckled pea I'm using now, it probably won't be as much. It might be a little bit less. I'm going to have to weigh that and figure out exactly how much for when I... Continue on with my uh, microgreens calculator thing I started, which I'm completely redoing that. That was just an example. Roman Gilland asked the most popular question I get. That's around uh, licensing, inspections, things like that. What do you need to do to do this legally? And I basically told him that check with your uh, Department of Agriculture and find out because I don't know. And it's different for everybody. Like I said, I made a video about that, about microgreens, regulations, and all that. I made that video because that is the most common thing people contact me for. So I guess that's probably about it. That's, uh, that's a good amount here. Pretty much a full tray, pretty close. I'll uh, slap the lid on that. Luckily, he gave me some lids. It says scallops. It's not scallops anymore, it's fava bean. Uh, so I'll snap that on there. Let me just go through a few more things here. Uh, Someone named, uh, their screen name is Ledgo. He want to know if I've checked out the brown mustard from Mums. I guess it's a really hot seller for him. It gets really big. Maybe I'll give that a try sometime. I uh, almost exclusively, well, I do exclusively buy my seed from True Leaf Market, but I'm not opposed to buying it from anywhere. So I'll look at, at True Leaf, and if they don't have the uh, brown mustard that's the same as Mums, I'll give Mums a shot. see what else we got um Coldy or, or Colby 
Fernacio. I, I'm sorry, I just completely hacked your last name, dude. Uh, but he likes the videos. He uh, likes that I share my failures and my successes, which I, I try to do that. And uh, he's actually growing some of his own. He want to know if I've ever done uh, Red, Red Vein Sorel. And I really, really want to. I just haven't. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, the seed is extremely expensive. Um, it takes a very long time to grow. And from what I've seen, people usually sell that like per leaf. It's that expensive. I don't think my clients are interested in that. Um, I could ask them, but I also, I don't want to ask them till I grow it because I don't know really what I would charge for it. But maybe I'll give that a shot sometime. I know it's, I'm really interested in it, and so I know there's a lot of other people that are really interested in that. Um, Aiden Brennan, who's a guy who's been, he's been following me for quite a while, said some really nice stuff. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. He thinks that some of the best uh, microgreen information in the world's on my channel. That's a huge compliment. There's a lot more resources out there than my channel, though, so um, I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, someone else suggested, this is uh, the Garage Greenhouse, suggested that uh, people are buying fava bean at Whole Foods and sprouting that, and that those are just slightly bigger than a pea seed. And uh, that's where I was kind of expecting these to be. And he was just curious, you know, about mine. He actually, he wanted to know what the size was again. And so I, I wrote to him, I measured them. They were, they're one inch long by about five eighths of an inch wide. They're ginormous. Dale's Hayes, he, uh, he, he noticed that my last video, I was hesitant to try them because I just wasn't sure. They, you know, the seed wasn't what I expected. Plants were slightly different than I expected. And he assured me, he's like, oh, they're, they're totally edible. He grows them. I, I did look into it, and yeah, they're popular edible green. Um, so thanks. Appreciate the reassurance. Uh, Tex Gal, she saw the same video I did from Curtis Stone talking about the fava bean um, to a guy that he was interviewing. And uh, I guess his was short in that video. And I, I remember him saying this too, is that, it had been cold out, and even in the greenhouse it was cold. And so they were shorter than they normally are. And you could see that some of mine were like really pretty tall. And I, I wonder, it might have been that his get like that too normally, except it was cold. Uh, honestly, uh, what he had growing looked a lot more appetizing in a way for uh, harvesting and everything. It looked a lot easier. His were all about the same height, um, even though they were shorter. But they were all about the same. They all had broad leaves on them and they all looked great. They weren't all, mine are kind of sporadic in the size. So we'll see how that goes. But that's going to be it for this video. It was kind of long, but I wanted to make sure I acknowledged a lot of you guys out there and tell you how much I appreciate having you guys around and having you comment. So uh, thanks. I hope you liked this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and watch the ones that are coming up. Thanks.